Hello everyone and welcome to this, another episode of 2D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanis. In the last episode, we built ourselves this platform right here, the long platform. It is the main structure we're going to be using to build our maps and our levels in this game. So hopefully you guys followed along and hopefully you did what I asked you to do and that is go through and build at least two more. Uh, I built these two. I built the uh, short platform and this uh, black bridge right here. And they're already set up down here as prefabs. So I'm ready to actually go through and start building a very simplistic level. I can add more or less if I, or I can add more things if I want to, and I probably will. But these three things are going to give me a good solid backbone to build this really simple platformer. I'm really hoping you guys are following along and doing this as I do it as well, and doing the extra stuff I'm asking you to do. If you do, I can promise you guys when you're done, you're going to have yourself a decent little game here that you can use to build on. All right, It's not going to be a, a game anyone wants to buy, but all the concepts here are going to be very important for you to be able to build a game itself, like a, a really good game. All right. In today's episode, guys, we are going to start looking at building our character. And this is some of the really fun stuff. You want to see things moving around, and we're going to take a look at that today. All right. We're going to start off in this, ver in this episode here by looking at the animation, building the character, building the actual asset of the character, and taking a look at some of the animation. All right. Let's get started. All right, guys. To start off with, it is not going to be too difficult. What we got to do is we got to go to our sprites folder, and I want you to locate your character. In my case, I am using this 2D Explorer that I created. Uh, it is a really simple sprite sheet. I actually only used very, very, very basic the, the af extreme lowest number I could in order to get animation out of this. You can find some much more complex ones or build more complex ones for yourself. Uh, I went simple here just because for, for time and, uh, and, and to make sure everything was simple for you guys to see. We did talk about sprites a little bit in one of the other, other episodes. I talked about the fact that the sprite mode uh, in a case where you only have a single asset, such as this background or this bridge or the rocket, uh, when you only have a single asset with, contained within that file, you want to leave the sprite mode set to single. However, when you have multiple assets or animation and you want to divide this up and you want to tell Unity where the different images are in that screen. So for example, in the Explorer or this plant uh, or this creature animation or this part explosion, whatever, you want to make sure that the sprite mode is set to multiple. Now after that, what you've got to do is you've got to make sure that Unity understands how it's going to be split up, where the actual images are. To do that, you go to the sprite editor the little button right here, click it and it's going to launch a new window. Now we can see in this section here, um, like I said, very very simplistic. The first four of these is my idle, uh, the next five of these is the run, and the last three is the jump. Very very simple stuff here. I did not do anything complicated at all. Uh, I kept it as basic and simple as I could. That's the, probably the least number of, of actual frames I could have used to do everything. But anyway, I have to tell Unity how to divide this up now. So to do that, you've got the option over here called Slice, and if I click on it, I have a couple of different options. Automatic. Let's see what happens if I do automatic. Slice. Boom. What it did is it automatically found each of the images, each of the images I had in here, and said, oh, here's something, and it, it put a box around it. In some situations, such as the cannon plant, you might want to do that. That is a perfectly good way of doing it. It's going to break up your images and it's going to say, okay, here's all the different assets and break up the assets. However, in the case of a sprite sheet, an animated sprite sheet, we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that each of these sections are pretty much the same. Otherwise, the center of gravity of your character is going to shift and your, and your character is going to move back and forth, back and forth. It's not going to look good at all. All right, so we have another option here. If I go to slice and instead of saying automatic, I say grid. It's going to ask me what the grid is. Now I know, because I made this, that my grid is 100 by 100. And I'm going to slice. Boom! And you can see now that each of these sections, each of my little dudes here, is sliced up nice and neat and inside of that little box. This is going to mean, as long as, you're, as long as your artist has done things properly, that this, this object, uh, the center of mass of this object, is going to remain the same. And if it doesn't, you'll see it right away, because what will happen is you'll start the animation and everything will shift back and forth, it'll move about, or it'll jiggle, or, or shake, or whatever, and you don't want to see that. So you want to make sure to get yourself a sprite sheet that is created properly. In my case, it is a 100 by 100 grid, 
and I can see that my character is falling in here very nicely. When I'm done, I'm going to say apply. Boop. Just like that. And I can now shut this down because I don't need anything else over here. Bam. Sprite editor. Shut. Shut. Ah, uh, the window's up there. I can't shut it. Close tab. Okay, good. Sorry. <laughs> my recording software was blocking it. Anyway, guys, so that's how you close it off. Make sure it's gone. Now what we do, if you take a look at this little arrow now, and I extend this little arrow, I have got a bunch of different assets within here. Each of those slices, each of those gr like grid units, has become an individual uh, object, okay? In order to build my character, I'm going to grab the first one. I know that one, two, three, four, that's my idle. Uh, one, two, three, four, five is my run, and one, two, three is my jump. All right, I'm gonna grab the first thing here, my idle, and I'm just gonna drag it, and I'm gonna drop it on here, okay? When I do, that's my little guy right there. When I do, I end up with something down here, and I'm gonna change the name of this right away to uh, character, boom. I end up with the character. Now, this is what it's going to look like. It's a little bit small. Let's make it uh, two times as big and two times as tall. That's pretty good. Uh, you might have to do that with yours. I don't know, it's gonna be up to you. I'm immediately going to see, right away, I've got a transform node. I wanna reset this to zero. Well, I don't wanna do that now because I actually already changed the scale. I wanna put this at zero and this at zero. So I'm starting off at the origin, perfect. Um, we have got our transform node and our sprite renderer. I'm gonna put this on the on layer 10. You guys can put it in anywhere you want. I just want this character to be on top of everything else. So I put it on a, a number that's way up there and that is great. All right, a couple other things I'm going to do right away with this character. I'm going to say tag, and I'm going to look through here, and I'm going to find, oh, player. Now, these some of these are already built. Uh, you can add your own by saying add, and you can, you can build more tags. You can just say plus, and you can add different things. Like, let's say I want to make an enemy tag, for example. Uh, and when I go back now to tags, when I go back to this character now, and I say tag, I can see the enemy is added. This is going to be my player. I'm gonna use the tag later on to find this player or to do things to it. Tags are a good way of, of organizing your game and allowing other objects to immediately identify uh, different things about this. So I know anything with the tag player is actually a player character and not an enemy, for example. We'll get more into that a little bit later on. Okay, so now I've got myself a transform node and a sprite renderer. There's a few more things we need to do to make this into a real character. Right now, right now, if I if I if I start playing the game, nothing's gonna happen. Watch play. The game's gonna start. Nothing happens. Nothing moves. What we want to happen is we want this character to be affected by physics. We want the physics engine to hold this guy down. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say add component. We're gonna go to 2D physics, and we're gonna add a 2D rigid body. Now, boop. Now I've got this in place. You can add different things in here. You can say how much it weighs, how much linear drag, so how much like uh, friction and everything is on it, how much angular drag, how much gravity affects that. We haven't discussed gravity yet, but we will. Uh, whether or not this character is, is on a fixed angle, so can it rotate? Nope, I don't want it to. I want it to stay in this in this aligned position. I don't want it to rotate around its base or anything like that. Uh, is kinematic basically means that this is. If it's is kinematic, means it's a not not a moving piece. If this is a, not an is kinematic, so I'm going to leave that undone. This is actually a moving character. All right, everything else here you can kind of leave as it is. We're not going to worry about that. Watch what happens now when I say go. My character fell off the screen. Good, we're being affected by gravity. Bad, the character is falling off the screen. So we have to add a few more things. We already talked about the fact that a 2D collider. A 2D colliders are what's used to make sure that two objects in a scene can interact. We know that our platform has a 2D collider. If I take a look at it right there, we added it. We added a box collider last time. If I go to the character itself, I can go in here and I can add an additional collider. I'm going to say, I'm going to add a little tiny circle collider. Now that one's pretty big. We're not going to actually add that one. The reason why I chose a circle collider, first of all, let me just change this so it's the appropriate size. Let's try 0.2. Uh, maybe point one five. That should be all right. Uh, maybe point two. Maybe point two, just like that. And I'm going to move it uh, more in line with his legs. I'm going to move the Y so it's down like that. I want it to align with his feet. I'm going to move it backwards a little tiny. 
tiny bit so it's more in the center of his mass so that looks perfect I like where that that circle collider is so let's see what happens now if I hit play boom our character falls down well, you know what I'm gonna turn on maximize on play so you guys can see it our character falls down and he's automatically touching the ground this is exactly what we wanted to happen the two colliders are interacting we've got a rigid body that drags our character down with gravity and we've got ourselves uh, two colliders that are coming together and the two colliders don't pass through each other both are neither of them are set to a trigger so therefore these are these create a barrier that that the other collider can't pass okay let's take a look at it actually in the screen here play boom he falls down and if I highlight both of these the long platform of my character you can see that this circle collider is resting right up against the box collider of the platform exactly what we want okay so that's great that's great our character cannot go through that uh, that barrier but without an additional collider right now he only had he only he's only colliding right here now the reason why I use a circle collider let me go over that as well the reason I use a circle collider is instead of a box collider, which you could have done, is this circle collider will allow him to go up a ramp, for example, or hit something and kind of roll over it. If I'd used a box collider there and had a hard edge coming down, uh, this character could have pressed up against a, another like bump or something and not been able to pass. Okay, so I used a circle collider at his feet. Now, I want to define the remainder of this character, the remainder of his hitbox, using an additional collider. What I'm going to do exactly the same way I'm gonna go on and I'm gonna say add component I'm gonna add a physics 2d a box collider now that's too big what I want to basically do is I want to add collision to his upper body in case let's say an enemy shoots at him or he hits his head on a wall or who knows what right he has to duck down in an area to get through we want to define this additional area right up here his head and his arms or whatever else you want uh, so that it can collide with things as well so I'm gonna add this additional box collider uh, it is far too big, so let's say 0.3. That looks pretty good. And let's say 0.3. That's too small. It doesn't have to be a square. It is just a box collider. Let's say 0.5. And let's uh, adjust this so that that looks pretty good. And adjust it back and forth, back and forth. That's not quite wide enough. Let's make this into 0.4. 3.5. 3.5. I'm being a little bit exact here, and let me tell you why. And let's move this to five. Two. Just two. Just two. I know, guys, I'm being a little anal. Sometimes I am. Now, listen, the reason why I did that, the reason why I made sure of that, that these things here were all aligned properly, if I had made, let me just do this quick, number three, five. Let's say I had made this 0.5 instead. You see how the edges are sticking out here? There's a corner here, and there's a corner here. Theoretically, as I was playing this game, that edge could get caught on something, and I don't want that to happen. I want to make sure, I think this was 0.35, right? Yeah. I want to make sure that there is a nice uniform front, a nice perimeter all around this character, all the way around, just like that, to make sure that, that nothing can get caught. If he fell off the edge of a plat, if he fell off the edge of a platform, let's say a hard edge like this one here, and he kind of got caught on there because his 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 uh, his box collider was too wide, he could get stuck and not be able to fall off. I want to make sure that doesn't happen. What I basically want to do is I want to make sure that this cube, this box collider I added, was large enough to define his his body region. It basically creates a hitbox for me. Now enemies can shoot at him. They can shoot him in the head. They can shoot him in the legs. They can shoot him in a variety of different locations. Okay. If you want to, you could have increased the size, the radius of this circle collider if you had desired, and you could have added a larger box collider to make sure that his arms and everything were, were going to collide with stuff. But you know what? I don't. I'm not really too worried about that. As long as this character is able to be hit by things and hits things with its main body, this is a pretty good hitbox area. Okay, so that is all you really need to add in order to define this character physically in this world. We're going to go through in the next episode and add our animation. All right. For now, though, guys, I'm going to cut it off right there. I've already gone uh, 15 minutes or so, and I want to make sure these episodes are short enough and only have enough information that you're able to follow along and, and do it little bits at a time. I'll make sure I upload all the videos for a particular week uh, at the same time so you guys can you know work on it over the week, but I'm not going to dump too much information onto you. 
All right. So for now, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you did, let me know down below with a thumbs up. If you didn't, a thumbs up is perfectly fine. It's not going to hurt my feelings. I don't care. Thumbs down is perfectly fine. If you've got something to ask or you want to know something, ask it down below in the comments. And if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have a nice day, everyone.